Hello. Hello. How are we doing today? So I see we have 12 people and people keep on joining in. So I'm going to meet all of you to begin with. Just so we don't hear any background noise because we do hear you moving your laptop or your phone back and forth. But if any moment you have questions, please unmute yourself and ask away. So to begin, are there any homework problems? Do you have a homework problem, Jessica, you want to work with? Um, number 12 and 14. On uh, what section? Um, 4.5. 4.5, okay. May we do number seven? Seven on 4.5. And 10. And 10. All right. If there's a little one you want to add, feel free to um, chime in. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay, great. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So let me jump to your homework. We're looking at 4.5. There you go, 4.5 number, the lowest number is seven, so let's take a look at seven. Seven reads, use the results of the product rule and power rule for logarithms to prove the quotient rule. Okay, so we're trying to show that they're equal to each other, right? So let's just take a moment to write down our rules again. So we have our quotient rule, the sorry, product rule, and it says that log base of x plus log base b of y, you can multiply them, right? if they have the same base. That's your product, and then you have um, quotient. And that's just over dividing um, or subtracting log base b of x minus log base b of y. I can write it with division, log base b of x over y. And lastly for we have our power rule, right? And our power rule says if I have an exponent, I can use it as a multiplication. So those are our three rules that we're working with. So taking a look at number seven, it's saying to use the rules of product and power rule for logarithms to prove the quotient rule. Okay. Well, so we wanna prove the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side that they're equal. Hmm. I'm taking a look at the at the solution posted online because my initial thought was, oh well, we just rewrite this using the quotient rule and they're equal to each other. But um, it seems to go about it differently. And that's okay. All right. So what it's saying is, I can think of x and y. This is the way the book does it. Your <laughs> online solutions show. You can think of this x and y, x divided by y. You can think of it as x over one times one over y, 
right? Because if I multiply them, I get x over y. And so I can think of this as x times y to the negative first power, right? So if I think of it as this multiplication, then I can rewrite this to be log base b of x times y to the negative one power. And if, that's the case, then I can use my product rule, which says that I can use it as addition. So I have log base b of x plus log base b of y to negative one power since they're multiplying. I don't see the purpose of that because then you just go back to write as a negative one exponent and one log. So what he did was, he was, oh, well, it's addition, so I can write it as log of x times y negative one, which is log of x over y. And I don't see what the purpose of this was. So um, seven is just testing you to see if you can work around them. My initial thought was, okay, so what this is trying to do is we're trying to prove the quotient rule. So we're trying to make these two sides equal to one another. We want to show equality, but I want to avoid using the quotient rule. So I don't want to write minus and division, right? So we're working using only our laws of exponents in their product rule. So that's the way you can go around it using this as your type of like guide. So the answer is not log B? Um, oh yes, I, I totally forgot to write B along the way. Thank you. I just get lazy writing the base. But yes, that log base always stays. All right, let's take a look at number 10. Number 10 reads, use the properties of logarithms to write each logarithm as a sum or difference of multiple logarithms. Okay, so always start off with division. So here we have this division bar and we know that we treat that as a subtraction, right? So we're going to subtract the top minus the bottom so that we have uh, log base b of x square root of y and this is what we did minus the bottom which is log base b of z cubed so i subtracted the top minus the bottom and instead of using one log i now am using two logs that's how the quotient rule works. Okay, so even though it's not written, we know that these two are being multiplied. So I can multiply, I'm sorry, I can write this using our product rule. If we do, we're left with log base b, and I'm going to add these two because I have multiplication. I'm gonna add them using each one with their own log. So I have log base b of x plus log base b of square root of y. And then we, we bring down all of our work, minus log base b of z cubed. All right, last piece. I want to incorporate those exponents using the product power rule. All right, so I have an exponent of three and here, really, that square root of y is the same thing as y to an exponent of 1 half. So I'm rewriting that square root. So 
go to y is the same thing as y to the one half power. So I just took the time to rewrite it. And I can take my exponents and I can move them forward to each term and use it as a multiplication. So finally, I'm left with, let's bring down what we have, log base b of x plus one half log base b of y minus three log base b of z. And we have expanded fully using all of our logs. All right, that was 10. Any lingering thoughts or questions? All right, nope. next, next we have 12. And these are good questions because these are tricky. I remember when I first learned them, they were tricky and when I tutored them, it was it was totally a totally new concept. It takes a while to kind of take in. All right, so our instruction for 12 reads, use the properties of logarithm to write each expression as a single log logarithm. So our goal is to only write log once. Once I only write it once, then we know we're done. All right, so let's take a look at 12. So start off with subtraction. Now when you have subtraction, subtraction, so 12, 12 is a really hard problem because we have subtraction more than once. So one way you can go about it is say, hey, I see that I can have a negative here and a negative here, so let's factor that negative. So that I have negative of two log three, five plus log three, four log base three or four. And that makes it easy because I only have to use division or subtraction once. That will make it much easier. So if you want to go about it that way, that's a nice hint as to how to start. But I know that's not something you can easily catch up to when you're first learning this. That's not like your first thought like, hey, let's factor a negative, right? So I won't go about it that way because I know that isn't your your that isn't usually our first idea. But you can always go from there if you'd like. Okay, so let's just work from, from whatever point we'd like. So let, how about we start here? Okay, see I have a minus. So let's go ahead and rewrite it using division. So that I have log base 3, uh, 15. Ooh, I'm sorry, we have that too. Before we subtract, we have to rework our exponents. So let's take this 2 and write it as an exponent so that we have 2 log base 3 of 5 squared. And let's write our problem, minus log base 3 of 15 minus log base 3 of 4. OK, now let's go ahead and use division. You wrote the 2 twice. Thank you. All right, so I have log base three of 15 over five squared. And let's bring down what we have, minus log base three of four. Okay, so we can simplify if we want that 15 over five squared. So I'll save that to the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. And we're left with division, right? Now we're being asked to divide 15 over five squared and four. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have log base three of 15 over five squared, you can write 25, divided by four, right? So we're taking each one and we're dividing our first by our second. Now, don't let this complex uh, fraction fool you. We know we're just dividing. So if you want, you can think of this as 15 over 25 divided by 4. Remember to divide fractions. We keep our first fraction. We change it to multiplication, and we write the reciprocal of our next fraction. All right, so our answer ends up being 15 times one 
over 25 times 4. And now we must fully simplify, right? So 15 and 25 have a common factor of 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 25 divided by 5 is 5. So our final answer is 3 over 20. So our answer is log base 3 of 3 over 20. And you can actually find an answer to that, but that's it's just asking you to write it with one log. So that, that satisfies the question. All right, let's take a look at 14. Well, before I move on, are there any questions about 12? All right, 14. So we're dealing with the same idea, but instead of Allen, I have, I'm sorry, instead of log, I have ln. So let's start off by taking those numbers in the front and using them as exponents. That way I can move around our quotient and uh, product rule more easier. So if we write it that way, we're left with ln of x minus 3 plus ln of y squared minus ln of z plus 2 with an exponent of 1 third. So all we did was make those, those front numbers and we made them exponents. That's all we did. OK, um, starting with subtraction is probably the best way. So let's start right here with our subtraction. Or it doesn't matter. You can start with um, your quotient rule. Let's just start from left to right. So let's go ahead and work with those two. There's no wrong, right or wrong way of starting. So if we do that, because we have that addition, I know I can write them with one ln. And multiply them so that I have x minus 3 times y squared. And then we bring down what we have, minus ln of z plus 2 to the 1 third power. OK, next, I recognize that we have a minus. So I know I'm going to divide my first divided by your second. First goes on top, and then second goes on bottom. So that we have ln of x minus 3 times y squared and z plus 2 raised to the 1 third power. And that's it. We have written it using one log. In this case, it's a log ac, ln. And that is our answer. OK. Question. So, question, yeah. Um, could you, uh, would it be better to keep um, keep the exponent as one third, or could you do the uh, cube root at the bottom? Um, yeah, you can do that too. Okay. Ln of x minus 3, y squared over the cube root of z plus 2. That works right. as well. Yeah. Thank you. Good addition. OK, let's continue with our lecture. Continue with 4.6. OK, as we go about this section, I want you to recall a couple of things. If I have log of a number, let's say two, this whole thing is a number. Don't let log throw you off. Log, remember, is just that we write, essentially we're writing it from an exponential form. But if you see log of a number, it's still a number. Also, recall your distribution property.
so our distribution property says if I have, for example, if I have two times x minus three, then I multiply everything inside the parentheses. So that I have two times x gives me two x, and then two times negative three gives me six. So that's how our distribution property works. We'll see this pop in again today. We also want to keep in mind our exponential or exponent rules. Two of them that I want to emphasize are your uh, power rule and product rule. So your product rule says that if I have a number with the base times another number with uh, the same base and different exponent, I can write it with the same base and I add my exponents. Not to be confused with the power rule that says if I have a number raised to another exponent, with the exponent raised to another exponent, those exponents multiply. So we went over all of our rules of exponents on Monday. If you have that sheet handy, it'd be good to have. All right, so with this stuff in mind, let's continue with 4.6, exponential equations and applications. Our objective our objectives are, one, solving exponential equations using matching bases. Two, solving exponential equations without using matching bases. And three, application. Now for, the, for applications, we're going to skip um, exponential decay. So when I get there, in case I get carried away, no, we, skip. No, we should be skipping that so you can stop me. All right, so this is how we want to think of these equations. They're, they're pretty fun. They can get really challenging, but they're, they really put all of our knowledge of algebra to the test. So let's continue with solving exponential equations using matching bases. Because exponential equations are one-to-one, -one, two exponential expressions with the same base are equal if and only if their exponents are equal. So that whole phrase is important. Exponents with the same base are equal if only if the exponents are equal. This process can also be used to solve each of the following equations for x. So it's trying to emphasize the same base. So you see how if we have uh, delta as a base and I have x and 3 as my exponents, or if I have beta as a base and 3 and x as exponents, or an uppercase uh, delta with an x and a 3 as exponents, we still have the conclusion that I can have x equals 3. So the idea is that I can drop my bases if they're the same. And that's the big punchline to the section. So bases need to be the same value. So we can work with exponents only. And that's it. Now from here, it's putting into practice and developing this idea a bit more. Moving forward with our notes, Regardless of what the base is, as long as the base is the same on both sides, the exponents of three of x and three must be equal. Following this idea, the first step in our process to solve exponential equations will be to check if it is possible to write the equation as the same equality of two exponential expressions with the same base. So here we have an example. Solve the following exponential equations. So before you even begin, ignore your problem and just look at your basis. So we're going to take a moment and only focus on our basis. And we have 7 and 9. So the whole goal here 
is to be able to write 7 and 49 using the same number. Okay, well, I know I know I can get 49 from 7 squared, right? Okay, that's what's important for this example. I need to be able to achieve the same base. That's your goal. All right, so let's go ahead and continue with our example A. I have seven with an exponent of three X minus one is equal to 49. Considering the basis of seven and 49, we must recognize that seven is the power of, 49 is the power of seven. And we write the equation as seven with the exponent of three X minus one is equal to seven squared. So notice how we wrote that 49 to be seven squared. That's your goal. You want, you want to have the same base. That's the whole point of this. Okay, once I achieved the same base, I can go ahead and ignore it. Just erase it from your problem. So now that both sides are power of the same base, setting the exponents equal as, so now we can work with only our exponents, which are three X minus one is equal to two. And we can solve X like we usually do, right? So we go ahead and we add one to both sides, divide by three to get X is equal to one. So in case you can see the work, we have three X minus one is equal to two. Add one, add one, we get three and 3x is equal to 3. We divide by 3 to get x by itself. 3 over 3 is 1, so we're left with x is equal to 1. That wasn't so bad, right? We just need to be comfortable with our exponents. I have a question. Yeah. Um, for our objectives, the number three applications, what do we skip? Oh, um, exponential decay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So going on to B, I have three with an exponent of five X minus four plus is equal to nine with an exponent of X plus one. So only focus with that three and the nine. Is there a way where I can write them with the same base? Well, yeah, we see that nine is three squared, right? Okay, now we have the same base. So that's what we're gonna do. We're going to change that nine to be a three squared. Then we have achieved the same base. Moving forward, considering the bases of three and nine, we must recognize that nine is a power of three and we write the equation as five, three with an exponent of five X minus four is equal to three squared with an exponent of X minus one. So what rule do we have here? I have an exponent, parentheses, and another exponent. We have our power rule, right? So these two need to multiply. So I have two times x plus one. Oh, we have, we have to distribute. So I have two times x plus one. So let's go ahead and distribute. So I'll multiply two times x and two times one. We're so left with two x plus two. And that's how, this is how this number happens. Remember, you're not adding because you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply. Okay, we have achieved having a same base, so I can go ahead and drop my base and work with our exponents only. So I'm left with five X minus four is equal to two X plus two. We go ahead and we draw some algebra to solve for X. So we can go ahead and add four, add four, we get six, move the two minus two X minus two X, we get three X, divide by three, divide by three, we get two. So our answer is x equals two. All 
All right, example C. Well, this is different, right? We have fractions. So our goal is always to have that same base. How can we go the same base? This one, this one's really hard. Okay, so let's think about the numbers that we have. We have these numbers, two, three, and 27, and eight. Okay, so as I'm working through these, I can't rewrite two. Two stays as two. I can't rewrite three. Three stays as three. But can I rewrite 27? What number raised to some exponent gives me 27? Three to the third power. Three to the third power, right? So we have three cubed. And then I want to think the same thing with eight. What number raised to some exponent gives me eight? Two to what power? The third. The third, thank you. Okay, so I know I can write this as two to the third power. Okay, so I see I can rewrite 27 and eight. Let's go ahead and rewrite it. So that we have two to the third power of x minus one is equal to, instead of 27, I'll write three cubed. And instead of eight, I'll write two cubed with the exponent of, oh, there's an exponent there. Okay, now we have a problem. I need to have the same fraction, but they don't match up, do they? I need to have a two and a two and a three and a three. Is there some way that I can flip this fraction so I can match my, my two over three? Use a negative exponent? Yep. Yeah. That negative exponent is you're going to be your best friend for this section. So yes, we're going to use a negative exponent. Before we do that, let's continue over here. And let's we you see how we have an exponent, that same exponent on top and bottom? I can rewrite that fraction to be three over two, parentheses exponent three, because it's a three on top and bottom. And like you said, we can go ahead and create a negative exponent of negative one, and that's gonna flip two over three. And we still have that three on the outside. So I just took a moment to break it down step by step. Now, lastly, because these two are being, it's an exponent raised to an exponent, so we'll have to multiply. So we're left with two over three raised to a negative three power. Okay, let's rewrite our equation. So now we are here. Um, let's continue. Continue reading our notes. Considering the bases of 2 over 3 and 27 over 8, you must recognize that 27 is equal to 3 cubed and 8 is equal to 2 cubed, just like we did. So 27 over 8 is the same thing as 3 cubed over 2 cubed, which is equal to 3 over 2 cubed. Now we can write the equation as uh, using that three over two cubed. But like you will notice, we need that negative exponent, right? So now we are here. We're working with that part of our problem. Okay, now that we have that same base, I can go ahead and drop it. So then I'm left with x minus one. Oh, what happened? So now we can go ahead. They don't know how to take off that oh, ruler. No need a ruler. Okay. 
So now we can go ahead and work with our exponents. So that we have x minus one is equal to negative three. We add one to both sides and we're left with negative two. All right, so let's take a moment to, to see, to let this sink in. So our whole goal here is to make, get that same base. Once I have that same base, I can go ahead and work with our exponents only. And that's the whole point to these problems. Now, C was the most challenging because it's forcing you to use um, your negative exponent rule and your prop power rule and working with fraction. So that required a bit more thought. But problems like A, well, we can easily see that 49 comes from 7 squared. And once we get our, our same base, we see that, okay, I can work with our exponents only. Not too bad. Now, the next part is going to be uh, a bit more challenging. So please be ready with your questions. Now, what if we can't have the same base? That's what's going to be a potential, a potential question. So let's go ahead and continue with our notes, solving exponential equations. Starting with the first exponential equation in section, in this section, we worked with seven raised to the three x minus one power is equal to 49. We were able to use rules of exponents to write every equation as an equality of two exponential expressions with the same base. We will now discuss this exponential equations where it is not simple to write both sides as powers of the same base. When we solved our first example, the solution was found to be one. Now consider, seven where the exponent of three x minus one is equal to 61. All things identical except for the slight increase of 49 to 61. As an educated guess for the solution, this might be a number a little larger than one. Now the big thing to consider is, I can't think of seven, writing seven with as an exponent to get 61. It doesn't work out, right? We know that seven squared is 49, and if I want to find seven cubed, well, that, that passes what we want, right? Seven cubed is 343. I used a calculator. I didn't know that by heart. And I want 61. So that's 61 is somewhere between that. So I know I, I won't be able to go about it the way we did before. I have to approach this differently. Let's take a look at example two. Considering the bases of 7 and 61, we must recognize that two bases cannot be easily written as a power of a common base. The key is to type the exponential equation is the power rule of logarithm. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce logs. Now to remind you of our power rule, this says that if I have some exponent, I can move it to the front. So we're going to introduce logs so I can take my exponent and move it to the front. But I have to throw in that three letter math um, idea that we learned, a log. Moving forward, starting with seven raised to three x minus one is equal to 61. Let's take the natural logarithm of both sides. So you can use log or ln, it's a preference thing. So let's go ahead and write ln of both sides. If we do, you see how we just take ln and we write in the front? ln, ln, we just write in the front. That's all we're doing. Because we're doing it to both sides, it, it holds true. It's mathematically fair. Now, the whole purpose of this was to take this exponent and move it to the front. That's the whole purpose of writing ln so that I no longer have to work with exponents. So now this is our new problem. 3x minus one times ln of seven equals 61. Now, don't let this fool you. Um, ln is just a number, don't let that throw you off. 
All right, moving forward. Essentially, we have to use a power rule of logarithms to bring our variable down to where it's more easily to work with. So let's go ahead and solve it. Our goal is to get x by itself. And we see that x is right there. And that's all we want. We just want to get x by itself. All right, so this is being multiplied by ln of 7. So let's go ahead and divide by ln of 7. That way that's gone. And we're left with 3x minus 1 is equal to ln of 61 divided by ln of 7. Now let's get x by itself. So let's go ahead and add 1 to both sides. Add 1. So that we have ln of 61 divided by ln of 7 plus 1. Lastly, divide everything by 3. So we have ln of 61 divided by ln of 7 plus 1 divided by 3. And it's going to be some calculator work. So let's take a moment, try to punch it into your calculator, make sure you're getting 1.4. And again, if you don't like ln, if it's easier for you to find the log button in your calculator, log is okay as well. I'll give you a minute, let me know if you have questions. Now, as you're working through this, punching into your calculator, everything's being divided by three, so make sure you do the numerator first. At Lena 61, punch into your calculator, divided by seven, press enter, then plus one, enter, enter, and then plus three. I'm sorry, then divided by three. You should get something that's about 1.0375235555 and then round it to be 1.04. Okay, let's go ahead and continue with our notes. So this is highlighted for us already, so I mean, know it's important, right? So this is a summary of what we're doing, a general process for solving exponential equations. One, you want to isolate an exponential expression. Two, if the equation can be written as bx is equal to b raised to the y, then we can set our exponents equal to each other and solve. Otherwise, big otherwise, A, take the logarithm of both sides, use the power rule of logarithms to bring down the exponent and solve for the variable. So instead of logarithm, you can also use ln, or we'll just run the side, or ln. You can use log or ln. They can both be worked interchangeably. There are some cases where we want ln instead of log, and that's when we have an e as a base because that would cancel. So we have an e to an exponent that would then I would want to throw in a, a, an ln instead of a log because then those are inverses so that we only are left with our x. So that's the only time where you have to pick one over the other. So I think that's our next section, section 6.7 or 6.6 .6, I mean. I'm sorry, 4.7. Example three, solve the exponential equation for where the exponent of 2x minus 1 minus 5 equals 21. Okay, so before we set this up, I need to have only one term. One will have an exponent or both will have an exponent. I need to have only one term on each, each side of our equation. If I have a plus something, then I need to move it or incorporate it in some way so that it's not there. So our problem here is at minus five. I need to move that five before I can start applying logs to both sides of our equation. So I see that, hey, I can go ahead and add five to both sides plus five, plus five, and we're left with four, 
the exponent of 2x minus 1 is equal to 21 plus 5, 26. That will get rid of that 5, so that worked. So that's an initial step that must happen in case we don't have one term equal to one term. Let's continue with our example. We need to isolate the exponential expression 2 with the exponent, uh, 4 with the exponent of 2x minus 1 on one side. So they worked out what we did. We added 5 to both sides. Now that we have um, one term equal to one term, we see that I can't write it as the same base, right? So I know 2 squared gives me 4, but 2 to some power will never give me 26, right? 2 cubed is 8. 2 to the fourth power is 16. 2 to the fifth power is 32. And 2 to the sixth power is 64. And I already missed it. I would want to get 26. And none of them give me 26. So there is no way I can write these at the same base. So therefore, I must apply the log of both sides. So let's take the natural logarithm of both sides. Okay, so we take the ln of both sides and the whole, the whole purpose of this is so that I can take my exponent and move it to the front, like we did here. 2x minus one, ln of four is equal to ln of 26. Okay. Don't lose your eyes on the prize. If you're ever unsure as to what your next step should be, think, well, what's my question asking? It's asking me to solve. So your goal is to get x by itself. All right, x is right here. I need to get that by itself. That's our whole idea of this problem. All right, so it's being multiplied by ln of 4, but I know that's just a number. So I can go ahead and divide by ln of 4, divide by ln of 4, so that that makes 1. And then I have to do a couple more steps to get x by itself. So I have to add 1 to both sides. And lastly, I have to divide by 2, the whole thing by 2, because that will give me x by itself. Again, we're forced to use our calculators. Remember to do our numerator first. And lastly, press division button divided by two. So taking a moment to look at our last example. Example three, are there any questions to example three? All right, and remember you have your SI, you have the first SI session, so you can also email me. All right, let's continue with our text. In each example, we took the natural, log, natural logarithm ln of both sides. You could use any logarithm, but because all scientific notations have a button for both the natural and common log, we usually stick with either ln or log. The next two examples will show one case where it's more of an advantage to choose either ln or log. In solving exponential equations using logarithms, and there is a base of 10, using a common logarithm log is better than a better decision. The reason for that is because log base 10 of 10, we know that gives us 1. But Alan, that's a base e. This is log base e of 10. And it'll provide us with a more different answer. If solving an exponential equation using logarithms, there is a base of e, using the natural logarithm ln is a better decision. Again, this ln of e is log base e of e. They make one, right? But if I do log base 10 of e, we get a slightly different answer. So we want to work with whichever is going to, using our log properties, essentially, 
make one or give you a, a, a natural number instead of a decimal number. Let's continue with example five. So if you're unsure of which one to use, take a moment to look at your example. You have three choices. One is get the same base. And then two, if you can't get the same base, you have to take the log of both sides. Um, if you're wondering which one to choose, if there's a 10 or 100 or 1000 or something with a lot of zeros, log is your best choice. If you see an E at all, then LN is your best choice. If you don't see any of those, then you can pick whichever one you like. And it's basically an idea of do you want to write two letters or, or or three letters. Okay, let's go ahead and continue. Example five, solve the exponential equation 10 with the exponent of three X plus one is equal to 91. All right, I see one of our, of our options, right? We have 10 and we see a 10. So we want to work with a log. All right. Oh. So we want to work with a log. We have an isolated exponential expression and both base and the basis 1091 cannot be written as the power of common base. Let's take the logarithm of both sides, choosing log because we have a base of 10. So if we take log of both sides, the whole purpose of that is so I can take my exponent and move it to the front. All right, so we have our exponent in the front now, and now I see log of 10. That's, that's one, that's gone. Wonderful, so I don't have to write log as many times. Now, if you're ever unsure, remember, think, what, are, what is our goal? Our whole goal is to get x by itself. That's what we want. All right, so let's go ahead and add one, add one. We we'll subtract one. Subtract one, that makes zero, minus one. And then we want to divide by three, divide by three. So we're left with x is equal to log of 91 minus one divided by three. And then we have to use our calculator, so we typed in log of 91 equals minus 1 equals divided by 3, you get 0 0.31, 96, 80, 46, 41. You can round whatever decimal point your instructions say. If it doesn't tell you, you can pick whatever you like. Round to two decimal places, three decimal places. Example 6. Solve the exponential equation of 6,000 is equal to 200 times e raised to the 0.5x. All right, we have options. So I want to get, so you want this. You want to get ln of e. And you don't want anything in between that because that's gonna cross, cause problems. You want this so that you can just go ahead and make that go away to make that one. But in order to apply ln, if I write ln, ln, what are we gonna do with that 200? That's a problem, right? So if you start off and you're like, hey, this doesn't look right. Maybe I should do something else. Maybe I should start differently. Okay, well, let's start off differently. Let's get rid of that 200. Let's divide two, both sides by 200. And that will get rid of it. So I have my E by itself. And that way I can apply LN, right? That's what we want. And that's what it goes on to explain. We need to isolate the exponential expression. Dividing both sides by 200 gives the equation as 30 equals E with the exponent of 0.5X. And we get 30 because 6,000 
divided by 200 gives us 30. That's where that comes from. Okay. Now we're left in a really cool situation because I have E and we know that if we take the ln of both sides and we apply ln, we can get rid of that E. The bases of 30 and E cannot easily be written as a power of a common base. Let's take the logarithm of both sides, choosing ln because we have a base of E. So we take the ln of both sides and cool. This is gone. Using the power rule of logarithms, we now have, well, we I guess we can bring this down first. We bring it down first and we have 0.5x times ln of E. We know that makes one. And now we're left to answer, we wanna solve for x, so we just divide by 0 0.05. Divide by 0 0.05, that makes one. And it becomes a calculator problem. ln of 30 divided by 0 0.05. That's equal to 68.02. All right, let's do a super challenging problem. Our final exponential ex equation example will have a multiple copies of our variable. Example seven, solve the exponential equation of three raised to the two x minus five is equal to four with the exponent of x plus one. We recognize that the bases three and four cannot easily be written as a power of a common base. Let's take the natural logarithm of both sides. And it gives you a note, since neither base is e or 10, any logarithm we use will, do, will result in the same answer. Okay, so we want to go ahead and take the ln of both sides. And again, the purpose of this is to take your exponent move it to the front and multiply it, right? So that we have 2x minus 5 times ln of 3 is equal to x plus 1 times ln of 4. And we want to solve for x. We have a problem. All of our problems in the past have had x on one side. Now we have x's on two sides. So our next a move will be to get our x's on one side. Well, this is being multiplied, so I have to multiply it out first. So I must distribute. I have to multiply each one in. Reading from the text, at this point, our approach will vary, will vary from before. Our immediate goal is to be able to combine both copies of our variable. For this reason, we will distribute to give our, to give our equation as 2x times ln of 3, right? Because we're multiplying. We're multiplying that 2 and the ln of 3 minus 5 ln of 3. We multiplied ln of 3 by 5 is equal to x ln of 4. We distributed and plus ln of 4, 1 times ln of 4. Okay, now we want to move things around. We want to add and subtract. Let's get our x's on the same side. So now we will now we isolate all terms with our variables onto one side, giving. So all they did right here is move your x's. So I see, let's highlight them. So I see I have an x here and I have an x here. I want to get them together. So let's go ahead and subtract x ln of 4 to both sides so that it's gone. And then we have minus x ln of 4. But I want to move what doesn't have a variable. So we see that this minus 5 ln of 3, it doesn't have an x, so let's move it to the other side. Plus 5 ln of 3, so it's gone, plus 5 ln of 3. And now we're here, where we see that each one of our terms on the left-hand side has an x, and on the right-hand side, we have no x's. Now from here, 
I want to be able to extract our axes so that they're together. So what can I do to get that x written only once? Well, we can factor out the variable. If we factor an x, we're left with 2 ln of 3 minus ln of 4. OK, cool. So then our last piece is to divide. So we have 2 ln of 3 minus ln of 4. So they're gone. Divided by 2 ln of 3 minus ln of 4. All right, from there becomes a calculator problem. We just punch it into our calculator. Now, if you'd like, before you punch it in, you can make it easier on yourself. So you can type in ln of 3 to the fifth power plus ln of 4 over ln of 3 squared minus ln of 4. So you can move your exponents up. Or you can just write multiply times in your calculator. I'll give you the same answer. Wow, this one was hard. It really challenges all of your all of your um, algebra skills. So again, let's talk about this again. So we started off by by noticing that we can't write it at the same base. So we have to take the log. What's different here is that we had exponents on both sides. So once we applied the ln, we had to distribute. We had to multiply it in because our x's is on both sides of the equation. And then from there, your goal is to get your x's on one side and everything else on the other side. And we do that by adding and subtracting. That's how we move our terms. Lastly, the biggest point that was that was able to help us out is we factor. We factor an x. That way we can get our x by itself. And then we divide to get our final answer. We'll do one more like this or a couple problems together before we end our class today, just so we get more practice in. All right, application. For application, I'll only do the first example and the rest I don't, we can do without. And this is what I said we would skip. All right, applications. The last comment on this section will produce a few examples of many applications that involve exponential equations. Example seven, how long would it take to double an investment and in account earning 5% compounded daily? So our problem is that we're gonna be working with our formula, but we're gonna be applying it differently. So, Reading from our text, recall that compounding interest formula A is equal to P times N plus R over N times N times C. We are looking to solve for time. How long would it take, right? And two specific words of 5% in daily, and daily give us, give us our equation. And so all I did was take the daily and the percent. The only other piece of information that's given the problem is the word double. But how do we know what number to enter for A and P? We can enter any number for P as long as A is double that number. So the easiest number to use is one and two, P for one and A for two, so that we have this equation. So we wanna solve for time. Now this is going to be applied just like before. We want to solve for our variable, in this case it's t, but it's in the x one in place, so we have to apply this differently. So let's go ahead and take the log of both sides. So we're going to take the log, 
and log, like we did here. Knowing the two bases cannot easily be written as powers of common base, we can take the common logarithm of both sides. All right, the whole purpose of this is so that we can take our exponent and move it forward. So I have 365 times t times log of 1 plus 0.5 over 365. Okay, our goal is to get t by itself, and t is only here. Cool, so I just divide 365 and log of 1 plus 0 0.05 over 365 and divide by both sides. Okay. And we're left with this. And from there, it's just your calculator, punching this into your calculator. So make sure you're comfortable with that. And your answer will be about 13.86 years. So that's how long it would take you to double your amount using a 5% interest and compounded daily. Let's continue with example eight. How long would it take for 500 to grow to 750 in account earning 6% compounded continuously? So I see the word continuously, so I know I will use that formula for continuous, uh, compounded continuously. Recall that com continuously compounding interest formula A is equal to P raised to the RT. Ooh, I messed up. There we go. We are looking to solve for time T and specific time of our equation. So it's set up for us. We know P is our initial amount, A is our end, ending amount, and now we have exponents of R and T. You want to know how long it will take, right? How long? So T is our variable. All right. So I want to get T by itself. But before I go ahead and tag an LN to both sides, I want to get E by itself. So I divide by 500, divide by 500, so I can get e by itself. And you punch into your calculator. 750 divided by 500, you get 1.5. So to isolate the exponential expression, we divide both sides by 500. And now I can take the Allen of both sides. Knowing that we have a base of e, we can take the natural logarithm of both sides. So we can move this forward and our ln of e makes one. Last piece, I want to get t by itself. So I divide by 0 0.06, divide by 0 0.06. And then you put it to your calculator. ln of 1.5 divided by 0 0.06, you get about 1.76 as an answer. Now, as you're working through these problems, for some of them, I give you time to work it with a calculator. For the other of them, other problems, I didn't. So make sure you, you know how to. If you have troubles, you can email me and you can maybe set up office hours via Zoom to make sure you're, you're, you know how to punch into your calculator. I know every calculator is different. All right, we're ending this section there. We can do more, but I feel like that's, that's all we really need. And I know this, this section is challenging as it is. So I want you to try some problems before we leave. Go ahead and um, let's try these together. So there are those problems at the end of the section. That's what I'm trying to get to.
All right, so let's see these together before we leave. So I want you to solve. Do four. No, I want to do one that's a bit more work. So 25 of x plus 3 is equal to 125 of x minus 1. Give that one a try. And also try Fifty is equal to twenty-five e raised to the point zero seven point seven t. So give those a try. I'll give you about um, four minutes. Will we unite back in four minutes? If you have questions as you're working through them, feel free to ask. I'll stop you guys at six twenty-one. Okay, so let's go ahead and meet again. So I gave you an opportunity to try some problems, maybe so you can see what kind of questions you have or just to make sure you, you understand it. 
Okay, so our first one, we see we have base of 25 by 125. Now I want to have that same number for a base. So maybe I know I get 25 from 5 squared. So can I get 125 by a base of 5? What number worked out for you? 5. 5 raised to the fifth power? That gives me not 125. So 5 with an exponent of what? 3. 3. There we go. Cool. So I can rewrite this as 5 squared. And we have 5 to the third power, right? Now we still have to write those numbers that I had to start off with. So x plus 3 and x minus 1. Now because I have um, an exponent raised to an exponent, remember you multiply so that we have 5. And now we're left to multiply 2 times x plus 3. And that's equal to 5. And I'm left to multiply 3 times x minus 1. Cool, we can go from there. So let's go ahead and drop our bases of 5. So that we have 2 times x plus 3 is equal to 3 times x minus 1. We distribute. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 1, negative 3. Okay, I want to solve for x. So minus 2x, minus 2x, we get x. We're left with 6 is equal to x minus 3, plus 3, plus 3. 9 is equal to x. That is a. All right, let's continue with b. All right, now remember our whole plan is to get ln, ln of b. So before I can apply an ln, I need to move that 25. So let's divide by 25. So that can be gone, and I can place ln comfortably next to e. And so this c divided by 25, we get 2. So we have 2 is equal to e raised to the 0.7t. Now the fun part, you can apply ln to both sides. And the purpose of this is so I can take my exponent and move it to the front. So we now have 0.7t times ln of e is equal to ln of 2. And the fun part, ln of e is 1. So that we're left with ln of 2 is equal to 0.7t. Last thing you get t by itself, I can go ahead and divide by 0 0.7. That makes 1, divide by 0 0.7. So we're left with ln of 2 divided by 0 0.7 is equal to t. Let's punch that into our calculator. ln, ln of 2 equals, divided by 0.7 equals, we get that t is equals to 0 0.9902102525, or we can round and say that t is about 0.99. And you can go ahead and pop that. All right, so those are two problems that you can go ahead and try. That I asked you to try to make sure we we're on the right track. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and um, get out of the shared screen. Hey guys, all right, so I went over lecture today. I will post a Zoom of today's lecture. If you go ahead and try to look, look at our past lectures, I removed them from Zoom, and I will be changing them from Zoom to YouTube just because Zoom has limited amount of uh, 
a limited amount of memory. So I maxed out my memory. So I'll be switching your videos from Zoom to YouTube. So I'll, if you try, just let you know, if you try to pick an older Zoom other than today's, it, it won't work out. You might get an error. So that's what, what I've been working on. Now I know this question, this section was a bit more challenging, but are there any questions for those that are here with me? I know it's super challenging. Make sure you come to me on Monday with questions. I'll be happy to help you out. Do you have a question, Isaac? Oh, no, I was just going to say thank you. I understood it. Oh. oh, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for including your, your comment. Um, Andrew, do you want to, do you have an announcement before we leave today? Uh, yeah, on Monday after class, we'll have an SI session, like you guys know, and um, well, I got a log worksheet, so we'll be going over the logs, especially some of the basic things, so you really get those down, and um, we'll also be on the computer, we'll be going over the calculator, how to type in exactly what you want to type in for uh, the what is it, the interest rate uh, problems and things like that. Yeah, knowing how to use a calculator is really important. Otherwise, it kind of kind of defeats the purpose, right? Yeah. Now, logs are hard, but once you, you practice them, they're really fun. So it just takes some practice. So don't be discouraged. At first, I remember, at first they're really hard, kind of, they're really weird to think of words as numbers, but that's all it is. A log or allen of a number is a number. Now, if we throw in a letter, then yeah, it becomes a value we need to we need to solve. But they're really fun. All right, so um, I'll post the Zoom lecture in a couple hours once it's available, and I'll open up a quiz for this week. All right, have a nice week, guys. Thank you. Come to me with questions on Monday. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.